Statistics and Excel. Correlation calculation with strange result. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon on the left-hand side. OneNote presentation, 1740 correlation calculation with strange result tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go into the view tab, immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose, be able to read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie into the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here, thinking about correlation, where we have different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relation or correlation between them. In other words, are the different dots and the data sets moving together in some way, shape, or form? If there is a correlation or mathematical relation between the data sets, the next logical question would, of course, be, is there a cause and effect relationship that's causing that correlation or mathematical relation? And if there is a causal relationship, the next logical question would be, what's the causal factor in the causal relation which is causing the mathematical correlation? In prior presentations, we thought about a perfect positive and perfect negative correlation, which are things that you don't actually often see when working practice problems or in practice, because usually we're looking at two different data sets that might have trends together for some reason, but not a perfect correlation. So it's useful to think about the perfect situation in theory but in practice it's not usually going to be a perfect correlation we then looked at an example with a few data points so that we can see an imperfect correlation with a few data points so we can analyze it fairly easily we then looked at a correlation where we had random data sets that we generated so we can see how we generated the data sets and what the correlation between them were now we're looking at a situation where we're going to get an unusual result with the correlation this being a reminder that like any statistics that we can't simply rely on one number all the time we still have to use our intuition we still have to think about what is actually happening here what is it telling us and oftentimes we have to look at things from multiple angles if we want to get a proper perspective about what the data is actually telling us so we're going to construct our data this way. We're going to have an X and a Y, this being our two different data sets. And we're just going to randomly, we're just going to pick an X and a Y and see whether or not they're correlated. The points we're going to be plotting are X and Y are 1, X and Y are 2, X and Y are 3, X and Y are 4, X and Y are 5. Wow, they seem very correlated. But then the last one, you've got X is 0 and Y is 7. So if we were to consider this data, let's do our mathematical calculations. Obviously, looking at it, we would say, huh, you know, if I looked at that data set, I'd be like, yeah, they look like there's some kind of relationship going on there. There looks to be uh, some kind of, uh, you know, one <laughs> looks to be tied to the other possibly in some way, shape or form. Let's do the math on it. So if we do the calculation of the mean, the mean is going to be the average. We can actually do it now since we don't have that many data points. We could say, well, this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 0 divided by how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 5 is going to give us, let's do that one more time. I think I messed up. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 0 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divided by 6. And then I get the 2.5. If I do the same thing for the other one, I get a 3.7 or 6.7 on it. And then if I take the standard deviation, we're taking the standard deviation of the sample. This is a measure of spread of the data, you will recall. 1.87 and 2.16. Now let's do our mathematical calculation, taking in essence the z-scores of the first data set, each point minus the mean divided by the uh, standard deviation times each point, same z-score of the second divided by n minus 1. So if I take my first data set of x, point 1, and I look at the z, the z will be, calculating the z is going to be 1 minus 2.5 divided by the standard D 1.87 gives us about 0.8. And obviously the second one would be 
2 minus 2.5 divided by the standard D 1.87. That's going to be the uh, 0.27.